I'm going to talk about tea digest here, which is a, a pretty geeky sort of talk. Uh, I'm Ted Dunning. I'm chief application architect at MAPR, but I'm also an Apache member and committer on many projects. And this particular project that I'm talking today is completely open source. So no need for the MAPR hat. This is with Apache hat on. Uh, so I'd also like to mention uh, before I go, this is appropriate for anomaly detection. Uh, we have a book, a small book, uh, that describes anomaly detection techniques that Ellen and I wrote. We also have a book on time series for very high performance ingest for Internet of Things. And most recently, we have a book about real world Hadoop. This whole series is about practical things that can be put into a small book that you might be able to use in a day or a week. But let's talk about T-Digest here. So I want to talk first about quantiles and why we should care, why we should do this online. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about how T-Digest actually works, and then how you can get it, how you can use it. So the first question is, why do we need online algorithms? An online algorithm is one that always gives you the answer right now. It takes data, it has a finite amount of memory, and you can get the answer from it at any given time. Well, here's an example of why you need online algorithms. This is from a very popular URL shortening site. I won't say their name because it's probably too embarrassing, but if you notice, there are seven clicks today on 10 different links. Seven clicks, 10 different links. 16 of the seven clicks came from buzzwords. OK, seven clicks, 10 links. All non-zero, apparently. I think we have a problem from the beginning, and then 16, 9, 5, and 4. So what's happening here is they are not using online algorithms. So the counts are delayed by different amounts for, for different things. And I can ask you, do you believe them? No, because it's just silly. Will you ever believe what they say? Maybe in a year or so, after they do perfect jobs for that full year, you might believe them again. When will their investors believe them? Never. So, this is a great example where they should have been using good online algorithms or at least delaying everything the same amount and getting decent answers. So that's one answer. Online gives you answers now, hopefully good answers. So the next question is why quantiles? Why percentiles? Well, suppose we have a whole bunch of users and they talk to a whole bunch of websites and we would like to characterize how well the universe of websites is doing. We do that by a high percentile response time. The, the average response time is very, very uninformative because it's dominated by the average, by most things. What we want to find out about is what bad things have happened with very low frequency, say the 99.99th percentile latency. But we have 100 million people, and say each one of those goes to 1,000 websites per day. So we've got billions of measurements per day. We want to have online results for any kind of subset. Like, how did people in Kansas get results? How about the people who complained yesterday but not the day before? How can we compare what they saw? What were the worst cases that they saw? Keeping that sort of thing in log files is a good idea, but it's not going to give us instantaneous responses to this sort of problem. Suppose we have a cluster, a single cluster, a thousand machines. Every machine talks to every other machine with, with remote procedure calls. Every machine has its own storage devices. And we want to know all of the response time characteristics, the entire spectrum of how fast things happen, what percentage of the time. Well, we also need, of course, to minimize the overhead, be able to handle every sample in no more than a few nanoseconds, maybe a few hundred nanoseconds. And we want to only use a few megabytes of memory on each machine to do this. 
we're not going to do this with a log file. We couldn't write to the log file in 100 nanoseconds. We couldn't even probably format the message for a log file in that much time. So how are we going to get these answers about what's working and what's not? Well, the thing we need is high-end quietiles, the, the high-end or the low-end, near zero, near one sort of quantiles. Those are the things that we need to understand and be able to measure in an online and efficient way. Now, of course, the question in any sort of thing like this, when we start going to these online algorithms of certain quantities, we cannot do them exactly. Quantiles, the top hitters, the, the, the number of uniques, all of these things can only be approximated in online algorithms. And so the question is, how accurate do we want to be? Here's some examples. If we want to compute the median, which is the 50th percentile, plus or minus a half a percent, so the true answer we get is somewhere between 49.5 percentile and the 50.5th percentile, that's probably okay. But the 99.99th percentile, plus or minus a half percent, makes no sense whatsoever because you know, we were talking about something that's 0 0.001 away from the end, and yet we talk about errors that are much larger than that. So that makes no sense. So it makes a lot of sense to have a 99.99 percentile to very high accuracy, but then if we apply that same accuracy to the median, we're probably overkilling it. So we need variable accuracy. Loose accuracy in the middle, tight accuracy at the ends. In fact, what we would like is constant relative accuracy relative to how far we are to either of the ends. Very accurate at the ends, less accurate in the middle. The T-Digest does exactly that. And that is the one characteristic that changes when we go from other algorithms to approximate quantiles to the T-Digest. It has exactly this property of variable accuracy and constant relative accuracy. Now, the way it does this is it keeps something like clusters. In fact, the original versions of the algorithm were almost exactly a k-means algorithm in one dimension, with the big difference that the size of the cluster was allowed to be large in the middle, where q equals about 0.5, and had to be small at the zero end and at the one end. Now, choosing exactly how that size is, is done, we could choose it to say be equal to Q times one minus Q. That means that near the ends, the size of the cluster gets smaller in direct proportion to the distance to that end of the scale that we're talking about. And that means our accuracy has exactly that same relative accuracy property that we want. That, that, that one idea of restricting the size of the clusters gives us all of the accuracy properties that we want. Now, originally we'd use this form, but it was pointed out to me by a guy, he's in the credits at the end, that we could do better by having something that grows a bit faster something that has the square root of q times q, 1 minus q. And that's because we can do linear interpolation. Here is the cumulative distribution of just a normal distribution. doesn't really matter. But you can see that if we have these lines are close together at the ends and further apart in the middle, we can do linear interpolation of this cumulative distribution, and we get errors that are quadratic in the size of the cluster that we have. And since the errors only are the curvature, not the linear part, because they're quadratic in that size, we can therefore decrease the, the, the power on the, the limit. That gives us a very important property that the size of the T-digest is bounded for the same accuracy, no matter how much data you give it, it has a finite amount of size. And we do that by using, I'm going to go quickly through these parts and then give some more examples. These are going to be for reference more. There's the, the fundamental concept is that we have a mapping from the Q space, the quantile, 
to the centroid index. This mapping is nonlinear. It's steep at the ends, so that we have small clusters at the ends, flat in the middle, relatively flat. And we allow every cluster to have a bound in k scale of at most 1. That means that we can build this algorithm with a very simple algorithm. What we do is we just order the points, and we collect points together as long as that scaled version of the quantile. Come on. There we go. As long as this scaled size of the quantile, of the centroid, of the cluster is less than 1, then we continue to merge things in. Once it's too big, then we commit that one centroid, and we start on the next one. And we keep accumulating points until its size is too big, and we set it aside. So that's the algorithm. We, we walk through sorted data, collecting them together in that way, in that scaled size, so that things at the ends are small, things in the middle are big. That sort of scaling, that sort of merging, gives us the scaling we want. It's a very simple thing. And what we can do is we can have a short buffer for new points. When that fills up, we sort it and merge it with the old centroids. We then fill up the buffer, sort it, and merge it with the old centroids. Because of the size bound, these can all be statically allocated at the beginning of the algorithm, and there's no allocation in the process. We can improve it a little bit by using an in-place merge that gets rid of half of the space almost. We can use an approximate for that curve, the compression curve. That will improve the speed because we don't have a trigonometric function. And we can get the cost per point down around or possibly below 100 nanoseconds per point because we have no allocations. All of the code is straight line, very, very simple sort of code. This is really fast. This is really truly online. We can get any of the quantiles out that we like. We can do alerting on large values. We can do all of the things that we marked as necessary early on. And it's easy to integrate. You can use T-Digest as an aggregator directly in Elasticsearch. A guy who was on this stage earlier, Adrian Grand, uh, integrated this into uh, Elasticsearch. You can use it from uh, Streamlib, which is a, a collection of algorithms for doing approximate uh, counting and things like that. You can use it as a UDF for drill. That's not quite released yet, but it will be soon. It's already in Apache Mahout, and it's in Maven Central. So the API is also trivial. You ask it for a T-Digest. It's a data structure. You feed it points, and you can ask for quantiles at any time. So the upshot is that we can now build streaming applications to do percentiles accurately and conveniently and quickly. We can use it to do anomaly detection, what is higher than the 99.9th percentile. We had a speaker earlier who was building a, a maximum detector, for instance. She, she was asked after the talk, how do you decide what maximum really is? What if some, there's one sample that's very large, possibly due to noise? There's no good answer other than rank-based statistics. You could say a maximum is something that's larger than the 99th percentile of samples within a minute. So you could get that sort of thing there. And you can use this almost anywhere. I'm going to move to the questions quickly. But before I do, here's a few credits. Odmar Ertel gave the idea of that K to Q curve. Adrian Grand did the fastest current implementation in a tree sort of thing. Uh, Huss from the, the, the solar community, he has provided some API improvements. Cam Davidson produced some very, very interesting public discussions of this. And of course, there's one name missing here. That's your name. You can contribute to this, too. If you have any needs, have any suggestions, or anything you'd like to add to this. <laughs>